Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon. Um, one of my subs wanted me to, you know, do some tips and tricks on stoves, so I'm going to uh, clean this out and see if I want to do an upside down fire. Just throw some stuff in here and get it going. It's been burning for about three days with no clean out, so I'm going to clean it out. And what I'm going to look for here is coals that I can leave in there. So normally, what I do is shake that a little bit. Kind of watch for them. What I want is a screen, like a big scoop like this. Is. I can go in there and scoop it. I've had stuff like that in the past. I've made made one where I can, you know, shake it, sift it. A coal sifter is what I want. Pretty easy to make one. I've had them built before. One one had a, like a shrimp basket from a deep fat fire, stainless steel. This is in the 55 gallon drum stove outside, so I I use that. I would scoop, you know, scoop down into it, dump it in there, shake it dump that into a bucket or dump it out into the stove. I could think I could filter quite a bit out and then just dump it over and there's a big pile of coal sitting there. So that's what I want to, that's what I'm going for there. See, there's a pretty good sized chunk. Usually the coals are lighter. So I can generally shake it a little bit like this. And some of the coals will stay in. The, uh, the coals will fall off. They're lighter, they're on top. So. I don't really like the stove that much because it's a weird configuration. There's a whole bunch of coals in there. I don't know if you can see them, but they're glowing orange. Of course, with that really bright light there, I can't. You can't see them. So. It's just irritating to me to dump coals out that you spent time and money to develop, and then to throw them out. And I've seen people literally dump out a whole bucket of coals. This bucket's going to be super hot. You want to have it in a steel bucket, not a plastic bucket. It's kind of a given. Your first time will be your last time to do that if you do ever do it. You'll figure it out pretty quick. My sons, one time they cleaned out a, the stove in the trailer and set on the front porch. Well, it burned a hole right down through the porch and almost could have set the whole place on fire. But they caught it in time. It was in a plastic bucket or cardboard box. I don't remember what. It was young boys, not thinking, no experience. So lack of experience, lack of knowledge is going to be very dangerous for people because they're going to do stupid things, whether it be in regard to mold or fire or whatever, you know. My son Ian was just here, my oldest son. He has a construction company, and twice, at least twice, I know for a fact, he has uh, rebuilt homes of people that burned them down, and they burnt, they got burned down because of stupidity. In one case, a young couple was renting a basement apartment from a couple that owned the house, and the girl wanted to start a fire, so she threw a, ca a cup of gasoline in the fire, burned the whole house down, two-story house. So, not good. Okay, so there's going to be plenty of cold in here. I'm just going to do a restart. I'll have a full bucket of ashes so nobody can use an excuse. I try to keep it cleaned out when I'm helping somebody so that they don't have the excuse to throw all the ashes out, throw the coals out. But it's just, just doing stupid things is very irritating to me, so I guess that's my problem is. And spending a lot of time with the chainsaw and gas and oil and labor, truck, truck and gas and fuel and splitter fuel. And all that stuff, and then to take that work and throw it outside after you spend that money to to create it is to me just really, really not not smart. So now these are all going to be pretty much dead ashes. There won't be too many coals in here, but there will be some. See, I'm about full on the bucket. I'm not going to get super anal on them down here. I cleaned this out a few days ago. Two more scoops is about it.
a super bright flashlight, so let's set this one up here. This is about a oh, I showed it the other day, but uh, you can see that hole there. That's where the damper comes into play. This is a flipper, flapper damper. So I'm not going to mess with that anymore. It's shut. That's the other thing. It doesn't shut tight, which is, unless I put something under it, it's not going to shut tight. But it lets air in, and it just doesn't do the fire any good. Definitely not doing a top lit updraft. I'll put this back in the cradle. So I've got a bunch of kindling here. So what I'm going to do is just set. I love red oak because you can tear a bunch of kindling off of it as you're loading it in. So I'm just going to put kindling in there. And it'll fire up, no problem. Now in this case you'd want to do a normal fire where you do a teepee fire or a log cabin fire or something like that. So you just want to put little stuff on the bottom. I could load this up and do it. What do you call it? Uh, upside down. I could do this. You know, put this in here. Put that in the other way because there's ashes down, coals down in the damper hole. I could do that. See, so watch this. See, they're sticking out, so I can just grab that and pull it off. Maybe a little bit at a time. So, there's my kindling. See, this is very fibery. You can try to tear about a quarter inch piece of this off, and you can't do it with all your strength. Strong stuff. I just shut the door, that will start. Oh, another thing that's really cool, if you have a glass door, this is what we call redneck TV. With the fire going there, it's really nice to sit in the chair and watch it. But if you have a glass door, you want to get a good scraper, and I mean a good one. This one isn't quite what I want. But you want to be able to see the fire. It's either the way the stove is burning or something, but it's very hard to clean this one. It's either the glass or something, I don't know what it is. The old one did not ever screech like that. 
because it's catching or it's the way the blade is beveled or something. I'm going to try to get the other one in here and see if it does any better, the old one. You can see how ugly this thing is. Makes any difference. This place that'll be about flat. We've never sharpened it. Used it for five years. The new blades on the new one don't fit in this one. This one has about a three inch blade and a three and a half inch scraper. And the others are four inch blades, so my friend can grind them. I can grind them down and make it fit, but that might be a, a solution. I got kind of a free day today. Bill and Shirley went to town, so an hour drive away to Springfield. So I've got some time. I'm going to try to clean the golf cart charger that I bought. It's got abused a bit. And I wanted to do a video, maybe talk to you all. Um, what I see happening, the things that you need to do for the upcoming days. Okay, I'm going to call that good. A little bit better. Oops. Get the scraper out of there. I can feel the difference between these two. This one's heavy. It's made out of steel. This is like an aluminum tube. Very light. I mean, strong enough. I'm going to close that, open this thing down here, and that should give more air to it. And I'm going to go get a uh, blower, a uh, forge type of blower. Show that to y'all. Okay, this I got off eBay, and it's a, I would recommend getting a steel version of it, but it's really good. A lot of it is metal. The blades inside are metal instead of plastic. The first one was called Air Grill that I got. I got a whole case of them. They are very excited about them. I gave them away, and everybody ruined them. The wife set in the sand, so you can't let this get dirty in here, and that's what's happened. It got kind of gummed up from just air sucking in dust from the stove and stuff so it got I, I took it apart and I broke a clip that holds the fan in place but it works a little bit better now so I'm gonna go ahead and run it so you can see smoke I don't know if you can see that I think we can that one's blinding me maybe I'll turn that one down or move it can't quite see in the picture if you can see the smoke that I see yeah yeah you can I can see movement okay so I'm going to open this up and blow it with the blower this is made for a right-handed person unfortunately it's I mean a, le a lefty could use it you have to figure out which way to turn it yeah so I'm going to open this up the damper's open as far as I can know and watch this I'm going to do it right-handed should be able to go faster than that, but I don't really need to. There it goes. shifting gears I can feel it so 
the way I put it together without that clip in there, it, it's very hard to, you can hear that. Yeah, it's messed up now. I mean, it's not running at the right depth on this. Now it's, now it's running right. Anyway, uh, click, 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 that's not good. Bill said he has some little C-clips. I broke it getting it off. So I need to try to stabilize it somehow. Okay, well, there you can see it's going, so that was an easy do. I didn't do an upside-down fire. But I want to say that upside-down fire is really... I've got several videos on it. I've got several playlists on it. Top lit, updraft, upside-down fire. And that's just... Let me um, scoot over here. big one on oh I know I should light it up Bill got a what do you call it a LED light a three way LED light it puts out about 5500 um, what do you call them watts they're lumens 5500 lumens of light yeah I want to move this up. I think I can do that. Thank you. Hello. Okay, so when, when the cabin was being built, a guy was staying here, Thomas, and he had been an Eagle Scout when he was a young man. I think I can see, you can see me a little bit there. Let me turn this up a little bit. Um, and, uh, so I did, I was out, in the bonfire place out there, fire ring, rock ring. So I was do. I did an upside down fire and he said, that's stupid, that's silly. And he ran it for a few minutes and then I lit it up. And 15 minutes later, for the next hour, I had to hear him, starting in about 15 minutes to about an hour. He raved and just went on and on about, oh, Brother Jerry, I'm sure glad you showed me how to do this. I've never seen anything like this in my life. There's just something about a top lit updraft fire that even in the open, is amazing because it, it creates a funnel. It creates a basically an up, updraft, a, an updraft stovepipe, and then it it pulses. I mean, it's just amazing. But it, I, I was guy did one. He walked up onto a big brush pile. He's burning off on his land, and he was making biochar too. So he's, he'd wet it down after about an hour or so. The coals he'd wet it, soak it down. So he had biochar to add to the garden area. So that was easy, quick way to do it. Yeah, you're wasting a lot of wood, but hey, he had a lot of land to clear, a lot of brush to clear, and so he just walked right up on the pile, lit it, a plastic shopping bag, you know, dropped it on there, and plastic drops, it's flammable, so plastic shopping bags are great fire starters. He just put it on top, lit it, and it just started dripping down. But once it started going, it was just pulsing. It was just, it was just, so, it was fascinating to me. I've said this before on a video, another video, but really fascinating to me. So I started taking screenshots of it because it's so fascinating. It was like. It was almost like it was alive, you know, like it was a plasma. But um, anyway, then I found, this is crazy, you know, <laughs> I could take a hundred screenshots here. But they were so beautiful, just fascinating to see. So this top lit updraft has a fascinating energy to it. And let me tell you, the uh, kind of similar. One time my son lit off a pasture to burn, whack we thought it was good to burn pastures. He's, now he doesn't uh, want any fire at all. But, um. There was a four-foot culvert under the road, and it was the bottom, the very lowest point of the land. Well, the fire got, it was fairly close to that, so when it lit up, it started a, a tornado-like vortex, and it created an updraft, right? So then you had a gigantic stovepipe, maybe eight-foot diameter, up in the air, and as it whirled, the stovepipe got bigger, so it started sucking air in from the lowest point, which was under the culvert, I, you know, nice, cool air, fresh, cool air, so it... What it did was it created a moving rocket stove, the biggest rocket stove I've ever seen. So it, it just followed right up the creek bed, burning as it went, with the updraft and the fresh air coming in from the lower end. Humongous rocket stove. I have no idea how big. We didn't know it at the time. I didn't know until later. A lady told me that understood all these things, explained it to me. It 
was a rocket stove. She did it on her land down in Arkansas one time, 100 acres. And um, so it was a moving, massively gigantic rocket stove. And it went right up to the neighbor's house, right within four inches of the house. It burned right up. Fortunately, he had mowed his grass really good because it was really dry. It was during a very, very dry spell. So anyway, um, no, I'm going to turn the, oh, the damper was shut. Well, that's good. I'm going to shut the bottom damper if I can. Best I can. I'm going to jam a piece of wood under there to make it sure it stays shut. So anyway, that's just one story. So chocolate updraft are fascinating way to start a fire. For a wood stove inside, it's the best way because 